Hi, this is Scott Garibay, and today we're going to talk about Marvel Multiverse role-playing game, uh, the tale of Green Goblin as a hero, or will he be, all right? As, uh, and so today, we get into something really interesting. So along his adventures, um, Green Goblin connected to Spider-Man, and, uh, and actually Punisher brought uh, Green Goblin to Spider-Man, and he said, listen, you know, Green Goblin, you have these powers, you don't understand them, you can't control them. Spider-Man went through every problem you have right now. He now understands his powers and he can control his powers. He can help you, right? So, <coughs> Green Goblin completes an adventure with Spider-Man. They defeat Enchantress and uh, Sabretooth together, right? Then, um, Green Goblin goes off and talks with Jubilee and Jubilee invites him to be in the X-Men and he says, no, I'm not going to join the X-Men, right? He then comes back and, um, uh, I, I actually, then at that point, he breaks with Spider-Man and he goes back to his own home, his Norman Osborn mansion. Yeah, actually, it's an entire floor. It's a penthouse on a New York City building. He goes back to this penthouse. He sleeps and then he gets up and his, um, his maid, Zymina, makes him uh, coffee and toast and eggs. And he's, um, he's there and he gets a text from, uh, and actually he talks with Jasper who handles his business stuff. And he also has a talk with, um, with Punisher and, and that relationship is growing. They're, they're becoming a team that could trust each other. Right. Um, uh, you know, a, a, like a, somewhat of a partnership, even as he's avoiding joining these groups, he is starting to attract other superheroes to himself, and, and at this point, um, Punisher is a real ally to him, and he's a real ally to Punisher. So, um, so at this point, um, Spider-Man texts uh, Norman Osborn, Spider-Man texts Green Goblin, and says, I got some information for you, meet me where we met before. So they go to that, you know, that very Batman-esque skyscraper stone hawk that they stand on, but this time it's in the middle of the day, right? And um, and Spider-Man's like, thanks for meeting me. Uh, when we met, I told you I could help you understand your powers and I could help you control your powers. Today we start the first part, understanding them. And so at this point in the Fantastic Four car, which flies, uh, Reed Richards flies up, uh, parks on the, on the roof, and then comes over and says, uh, hey, Green Goblin, uh, you know, I'm... Uh, I'm uh, Mr. Fantastic from the Fantastic Four, and um, and when you fought Sabretooth, there was blood on the ground, and when you fought Sabretooth, Spider-Man's blood was, your blood was on the ground, Spider-Man's blood was on the ground, and Punisher's blood was on the ground. We took samples of all of that blood, and at the request of Spider-Man, we are, um, we are uh, at the request of Spider-Man, I analyzed your blood and I could tell you the source of your powers, right? He says, your, your entire bone structure has been replaced by dark wood, right? And he says, let me explain what happened. So you were, um, you were doing experiments with a compound, a mixture of, um, metal flakes and um, some fluids that you found uh, near a uh, near an African tree, and then there was a catalyst in there. And there was another, um, like another. There were three ingredients, right? Two of those are understood. The mat the ta the titexium, which is your own brand of metal, which you use for your satellites, and then there was this fluid from this area in Africa. Well. That area in Africa, you didn't know this, but it was desecrated ground, right? Now, it, you know, um, and just a Scott Garibay note, consecrated ground is like churches. Desecrated ground is the opposite, like where seven people were murdered. That's desecrated. It's, it's literally unholy, right? So there was this desecrated ground, and on that ground, there was a hell tree. And hell trees are believed that their roots literally go all the way down to hell, right? So you had ground up parts of hell root and you ingested those heart, those parts of hell root and it replaced your entire skeleton with dark wood. So where normal people have bones, you have this dark wood. And what this dark wood has done is it's given you super strength, super speed, not as much as flash, but like Scott note there, but 
much faster than normal humans and super resilience, right? So he's stronger, faster, and more, and has far more endurance than normal people. But the reason why is those hell roots went all the way down to hell to one of the five factions of demons that live in hell. And you and you, your green goblin costume is because in your dreams, you're seeing these green demons that you're now bound to, right? So, and when you have these green outs and you can't control yourself, that is literally the green demons taking over your body and doing things with. So your, your green goblin powers come from this hell root, which you ingested, which replaced all of your bones with dark wood. You're now super strong, super fast, and um, super, in, super resilient, right? Um, and that is the cause of your green goblin oil. This. So, uh, you know, so Green Goblin's like, oh, uh, that's a lot to think about. Thank you, Reed Richards. And that, uh, and that, and then he asked, uh, and then that, and then that's the end of that scene. And we'll pick it up there when we start again next time. Um, every single word is, that you just heard is my humble opinion on uh, Marvel Multiverse role playing game, Iron, Se Iron Snow Season. The important part is when I hear your humble opinion, when you get in the comments and send your traffic. Please consider liking and subscribing and have a fetch millennium.